Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Hi, my name's Amy Malkolik. Hi, And uh, thanks, Gary, for asking me to share. And um, I was down in Cornwall with the girls this week, and for, like, the first time, you know, I was playing in the sea, having a lovely time. Edie's burying herself in the sand, the dog's running around. I sat there, counting my blessings. You know what I mean? It was bliss. Get a text, Gary, 25 minutes Friday, <laughs> recorded. And it was just like, my stomach just sunk. Oh, shit. <laughs> But, you know, I am, you know, grateful to be here and, uh, you know, f- thanks, Wayne, you know, uh, thanks, Andy, for sponsoring me and, um, you know, what a privilege it is to share at my home group and um, and to do the big one as well. So, uh, you know, thank you. If there's anyone new, welcome. Welcome to Alcoholics Anonymous. Welcome to the Road to Recovery Group. This is where I, you know, learned what alcoholism was and where I've been shown how to recover and where I've grown up, where I've learn to live life um it is through this group and the people in it and you know i started drinking at a really young age 11 12 and i just absolutely loved what alcohol did for me i was painfully shy awkward didn't fit in just at odds with the world and uh, i had some cider in the part of my friends and it was just changed me do you know what i mean i just loved the feeling it gave me i could talk to the boys i fancied i didn't care what people thought of me i just loved what alcohol did for me and um that was it do you know what I mean I was just off from the beginning I just drank as much as I could I just used to go out and get blind drunk and so sort of look forward to it all week I'd be planning I'd save up my dinner money my pocket money and I'd plan how I was going to get a drink and that so I just look forward to it and I would just just go out and get as drunk as I could and to begin with it was fun there was always I'd always take it a bit too far you know I would have to hear about it in the morning and whatnot but Within a couple of years, you know, I, I was just, like, full-blown in it. You know, I was just, um, you know, drinking as much as I could, as often as I could. And when I was sober, I was just so uncomfortable living. You know, I, I just was, I just was like, paranoid. All the things I'd done when I was drunk, I was just so ashamed and disgusted about. I just couldn't face people. I would, I would be lying, I'd be stealing, I'd be cheating. I would be, like, I was just, like hanging around with the wrong crowd, I would just, it just, it was just getting, I would go, like, when I was, like, 13, 14, I'd be in over 18 nightclubs, I was just getting into dangerous situations, it was just, it's like snowboarding, it was just getting worse, and, and I just knew that it, I wasn't quite right, and this wasn't quite right, and I would try and sort things out, make myself feel better, just try and, like, Get, get myself together and I just try various things. You know what I mean, I, I always blamed everything, all my problems, all the mess I was in on something, somebody or the situation that I could explain it. I couldn't ever take responsibility for any of it. And, uh, you know, I'd move around. I'd go to my mum's, to my dad's, to my nan's. I would change friends. I would come up with a great plan where, right, I'm not going to drink. I'm going to go running and do exercise. The endorphins will make me feel better. I won't feel this suicidal. Do you know what I mean? And I would be, like, laying in bed, thinking it all over, how it's going to, this time it's going to be different. And um, I would mean it. Do you know what I mean? I, I would really think that this was it this time. And, you know, I would just end up going out, getting drunk, and just the same thing would just happen and wake up in the morning with that just awful fear and dread and disgust. And I just knew I couldn't carry on like this anymore and um, had that constant suicide thoughts. I just could not live in my own skin. My my own mind was tormenting me and um, I just knew that there was something wrong with me and I just couldn't stop drinking. I couldn't control it. I just would always end up drinking again. And uh, I knew about Alcoholics Anonymous, but I just thought, there's no way that I'm an alcoholic. I'm not physically addicted to alcohol and I don't drink every day. That was my sort of thing, that why I wasn't an alcoholic. And um, But I come here anyway because I didn't know what else to do, basically. You know, I, I'd seen a counsellor. I'd done other things to try and, like, feel better. And uh, it, it all failed. And I got here and um, I just could identify absolutely that I was an alcoholic. You know, once I picked up that first drink, it set up a phenomenon of craving. I'd drink drink 
And um, no matter what, I had no effective mental defence against that first drink. I would always drink again, despite promises I've made and whatever. I would always end up drinking again. And I just knew that that was my problem. <laughs> and um, like in one part of me was like, oh, like a relief. But part of me was like, I don't really want to be an alcoholic. I was 17 when I got here. I was so chronically self-centred. I just didn't want to look at anybody. I didn't want anyone to talk to me. My hands was always sweaty. I thought my life was over. Do you know what I mean? This is it. Church halls. <laughs> I was just... It, it, I, just didn't, I just didn't want it. And, and like one side of my brain was like that and the other side of my brain was like, you can't live anymore like this. Do you know what I mean? You just can't carry on. And... Um, I was broken enough, desperate enough of that jumping off place and I asked for a sponsor and I I got a sponsor and she asked me if I was willing to go to an event so I said yes and she gave me a list of things to do and, um, you know, I just did it. I did think, I thought I might need a bit more, something a bit more medical, a bit more, I don't know what, but anyway, regardless of all the crap that was going on, on in my head at the time, I just did what she said, and uh, Gail took me through the steps, and she got me into good habits early, got me into service in a group, and um, like within a couple of weeks, it was just like that obsession with alcohol was removed from me, and I had a just a feeling that it was going to be all right. And um, you know, I was still a, like a, a bit of an emotional mess to begin with. Do you know what I mean? Those early days were, but the, th the thing is, I had stuff to do. Do you know what I mean? I had people to speak to, I had people to meet up for coffee. Just, just immerse myself completely into Alcoholics Anonymous, into this home group. There's always stuff going on, meeting up for coffee, going out for... Do you know what I mean? Just, just loads of stuff. I just got involved, absolutely. And, uh, you know, once I took the steps, it was just like that step four and five. After that, it was just like all those resentments that had been burning me up, all the, all the fear, just loads of it. <laughs> loads of, loads of it. All those things which... You know, I just felt disgusting about, do you know what I mean? I was deeply ashamed. I didn't want anyone to ever find out about me that could, like, haunt me. Do you know what I mean? That I, w I would avoid places and things and people because of what I'd done and people that, you know, all that, all that rubbish. All of that, I'd written down and looked at my defects of character and shared it with a sponsor, honestly. And after doing that, it was just like I'd been given a clean sheet at life, you know. I was just, it was just like I was a different person. And, um... I just felt different and, uh, you know, worked the rest of the steps. And my life just, like, all the chaos and the mess that seemed that I was in when I got here that seemed too much to sort out, you know what I mean? It was just seemed like I'd screwed up <laughs> so bad. But everything just seemed to, I don't know, just, like, work out a little bit, do you know what I mean? Like, it, it, was, all, it was all coming together and, um, you know, it was just, just incredible and... Like, loads of brilliant stuff happened the first few years of recovery. It's just like, I got, uh, you know, I finished my A-levels, moved, to, went to uni, spent on girls' holidays, was just really active, like, doing service in the group. Do you know what I mean? It was just like, from going to this suicidal mess, I couldn't catch a bus, I couldn't take responsibility for my life, I couldn't think straight, do you know what I mean? I couldn't sleep properly, and all of that. Come here admit defeat, you know what I mean, get a sponsor, do suggestions, work the steps, and I was just, like, flying, and my life has just taken off, and um, it's just been, just been incredible, and, um, you, you know, if you are new, you know, don't miss out, you may think this is that end, <laughs> do you know what I mean, get in the end, and you, this is real crap, do you know what I mean, like, feeling awful, and just life is over and uh, it just just that horrible feeling as a newcomer when you arrive here. But there's so much on offer in Alcoholics Anonymous, the solution to your problem. And, um, you know, and you can recover and have a good life. And, um, you know, th that's what I've had. I've had, I had a good life. You know, I had no religious upbringing in the word God. I was a little bit, hmm, but it, didn't, it wasn't enough to put me off. But, you know, I've had spiritual awakening, a change of thought and attitude, and I've got a relationship with a higher power. And, you know, it, it, don't, don't, that's a red herring, do you know what I mean? Don't let that put you off. And, um, you know, life is like, wow, well, it's just more than I could imagine. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, it's just more than, you know, I, you know, I've got 
it's not all about the things I've got, but, you know, I'm going to tell you about some of the things, you know, like I finished uni, I come back to Plymouth and um, got a job and went back to uni, retrained, and, like, I've been in my job for over 10 years now, I've got the same employer, you know, things like that are incredible, do you know what I mean? Like, I, when I got to into service in the home group, started off cleaning and greeting, and then I got fast track to the tea team, and I can remember ringing up saying, you're in the tea, you need to bring the milk. And I was just like panicking. Oh, gosh, just, the milk, it's a big responsibility. I don't know if I can do it. Do you know what I mean? It just seemed like, oh, a panic. And um, do you know what I mean? Like, that, that is the kind of person that I was when I got here. And, uh, you know, to, like, have a professional job, to be in the same employer for, like, over 10 years. It, do you know what I mean? That, that wasn't me. And... Um, and um, but you know I'm I'm there still needs work. There's been a position in my team that's come up recently, and um, I, I don't even I don't want it, but there is one. And I was just had a like a silent resentment with my boss for about ten days because she didn't ask me to apply for it. And um, <laughs> you know, and I was just thinking, oh, she's not gonna she's not gonna even ask me. I can't believe it. Do you know what I mean? I just this this little brewing resentment, and then I. I met up with her, and she's like, oh, so I presume you're going to apply for the job. And I thought, oh, all right then. But no, I'm not, actually, because I don't, I don't even want the job. But I've just been, like, thinking, oh, you know, she doesn't think I'm good enough. Like, I'm going to have to leave. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, my, my head just still, this is, like, a few couple of weeks ago, my head just still goes down that, like, path of just do 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 you know what I mean? And, and it wasn't anything. It was just a made-up thing in my own head. And, um, you know, that is what I can still be like now. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've, I've got a good life, but I can still be like that. And, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you know, and, you know, it's just, it's changed my family. Like, my my family were always worried about me. I'd always ring up, um, threatening to commit suicide in the night, like, ranting and raving about all my all my problems, why they were to blame for it, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, I've had opportunity to make amends, you know, I uh, did my step A and, you know, I've made my amends to my family and, um, you know, the relationships I've got now with them are, you know, incredible. You know, I am um, always the one that they'll ring if there's any problem. Do you know what I mean? I can be a reliable member of my family. Um, like my nan, she's just put me as to be a power of attorney and to look after all her medical needs, all that, everything like that. I mean, that is not me, do you know what I mean? I, I, I you know, this is because of alcoholics and other matters because I've been able to think of other people, be reliable and all those things, take responsibility. It's all those things that I've been taught here. And, um, you know, um, our family was literal chaos, do you know what I mean? It was full of, like, social workers, the police, there was always a drama, there was always some sort of thing, and, and now it's just not like that, do you know what I mean? It's still not drama-free. As you know, Mother brings her own... Uh, <laughs> she's not here tonight, but I hope she'll listen, and she'll have wanted to mention, but she'll bring her on. But, um, you know, but from what it was like, you know, to, to the relationships and the family we've got now is unbelievable, and, uh, and you know, like, my, um, my kids, as much as I love them, and, like, I'm like so grateful that the life they've got now and they've got no idea do you know what I mean they've literally got no idea that they've got uh, like a stable home it's it's calm do you know what I mean there's no drama that you know all of those things they that's just their life do you know what I mean but I know that it's only that way because of this group because of alcoholics anonymous because of being sponsored and um and I get really annoyed with them when they're and I just think you're not grateful. You do, do you know what I mean? You're just not grateful. And um, you know, and you know, and they do. Do you know what I mean? They are lovely kids, and I'm just like blessed that they've got like a, a nice, like stable. You know, it's not perfect. I mean, I'm not perfect. Like I lose my temper, all of that. But you know, they're not brought up in alcoholic chaos. Do you know what I mean? Because they're not. And um, you know, that's like one of the biggest things that I, you know, I get grateful for every day as much as they annoy me. And uh, tonight, you know, today I spent the day with Ida. I took her to get her nails done, done all this, and she's just looking at me with her face on all day. And I just think, like, ah, you've got no idea you're born. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, I'm sharing tonight the t- 
20 years sober and it wouldn't, you wouldn't even have the life you've got now without it. And you're just treating me like this. And I just think, you've got no clue. And she doesn't, do you know what I mean? She doesn't have to either, but, um, and, she, and she doesn't have to, but I know that that's why, do you know what I mean? I know that that's why, you know, we've got this life that we've got and, um, you know, I can try and deal with my resentments when they come up and they still come up thick and fast and I still get that, you know, when I get a good one. And you get that burning resentment in your tummy and you just know that that is like a corker of a resentment and I just know that it's my defects of character and, you know, I can just ring a sponsor, pray for them, ring newcomers back with them. Do you know what I mean? Just, just all the principles of my programme, I can work. I don't have to, like, fly off the handle, I don't have to quit my job, I don't have to walk out, I don't have to run away, do you know what I mean? Because I, I can just deal with situations that used to baffle me and um, you know having a sponsor is such a big thing and I uh, thank you for taking me through steps and Catherine who's here tonight um, for sponsoring me as well and, and Andy you know and I've always been sponsored I've always rang in and on the whole part do you know what I mean I, I've always tried to share honestly with them and um, just having someone else on your side who just gives you clear-cut direction just just take this is an open meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous in support of AA singleness of purpose. We respectfully ask that sharing be confined to alcoholics and that when discussing our problems, we confine ourselves to those problems as they relate to alcoholism. There may be visitors here who are unfamiliar with our tradition of anonymity. We need always maintain personal anonymity at the level of press, radio and films. This tradition is a constant reminder that personal ambition has no place in AA. We are sure that anonymity is the greatest safeguard AA can ever have. We therefore seek your cooperation in protecting the anonymity of our members at the public level. The format of tonight's meeting will be three 10-minute speakers, followed by a full speaker until approximately 8.30. The meeting will then be open to the floor and closed at 9 o'clock. Could everybody turn their mobile phones off or switch them to a silent profile? If it's someone I can just doesn't matter what's going, do you know what I mean, whatever it is, I can just be honest with that one other person. You know, I was the type of person that would just go around telling everyone my problems, trying to seek the answer that I wanted, do you know what I mean? And never listened to any advice, never, you know, I was just quietly defiant, I would nod, say yes, but just do my own thing anyway. And now, you know, I can just listen to my sponsor and just trust that they've got my best interests at heart and, and just do it, do you know what I mean? And it's always worked out just fine. And, um, you know, that is priceless. Just, just priceless having that, um, having, having that sponsor. How long have I got? <laughs> Eight minutes, gosh. This is, this, yeah. Um, you know, uh, you know, I, you know, I have, I have, really got a blessed life and um you know i've got all all of the you know like the job my home all of those things but um you know what i never had you know i was i i couldn't do things unless i was drunk do you know what i mean i couldn't um just just live life i can remember having some school work and stuff doing i thought i talk more when i drunk when i'm drunk i'll write my um coursework drinking because I'll be able to write more because I can talk more when I'm drunk. So I used to like submit, do you know what I mean, drunken essays when I was like, I don't know, like 14, 15, do you know what I mean? That was, that was the kind, you know, and, um, you know, now I've just, I, I don't have to, do you know what I mean? Like um, being in this group, being shown how to live life, working through the service structure, just showing me how to deal with people, situations the public do you know what i mean just all of those things from working through the service structure that um you know i can just uh, apply myself to things and, and follow through and, and do things right the right way do you know what i mean not having to scheme and cheat and things like that and um just be financially responsible and but you know i've got a peace of mind that i never had before you know i've taken step three i've got you know i've just i just don't have to go to bed you know, every night just with a whirling list of either resentments or overwhelming fear. Do you know what I mean? Like, even though I wanted to die and I was suicidal, I'd always think that I was dying of something as well. Do you know what I mean? Like, like I was just consumed with my own mind all of the time, but I just don't have to live like that anymore. You know, I've, 
you know, I can be grateful and just go to sleep and try and think of others and when I'm at work, do you know what I mean? I can try and help my colleagues and all of those things because I've been shown how to live life here and, um, you know, that that's, that's priceless. And if you're visiting or new, you know, that this group is just um, something special. You know, when I moved away, three years I was going to meetings elsewhere and every week I'd ask someone if they wanted to go for coffee. Like, not once did anyone want to go for a coffee. Not once did anyone... Do you know what I mean? I could just turn up as the meeting started, leave as it left, and, um, you know, that I, I wouldn't have the recovery. I probably wouldn't have even stayed sober. Do you know what I mean? But having a group like this where things are expected of me and where everyone's singing from the same hymn sheet and where just look after each other, do you know what I mean? And, um, you know, I've had some of the best times of my life with people from the meeting and, um, you know, and holidays and trips away and nights out, you know, nights in and all of those, th- you know, like fun days and, you know, do you know what I mean? This is more than just Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, this is somewhere special and, um, you know, if you're new, or you don't miss out on that, you know, don't miss out because it, it, it really is, um, I haven't got the words or the vocabulary or, the, do you know what I mean? I feel a lot of pressure during 25 minutes. I feel, that's the tone of the meeting, do you know what I mean? I've been there when they, when they talk about it and, you know, and you want to do your best for your home group and for the newcomer. And then I'm just a, still a really self-centered person, do you know what I mean? I just think, oh, I shouldn't have worn this dress. You should sign all that. Do you know what I mean? I'm still like that at the same time when I'm trying to speak. Do you know what I mean? I'm still, there's still a lot to, lot to do. And the more sober I am, the more alcoholic I know my thinking is. Those initial years, it's like I'm elated. I'm not drinking. I've been given a new life. Like everything is just, like everything just come really fast, really good, really quickly. And the longer I've been sober, like, you know, it's like gone on a different level. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like things are good, but sometimes things are like hard. I've got a preteen and a toddler, and like my days, I do them with two lots of tantrums. Do you know what I mean? I've got like, um, so I didn't have any of that when I got here. Do you know what I mean? But I was elated. But now, like, I have to work deeper at my program in different ways. Do you know what I mean? To, to maintain a, a peace of mind and a serenity and just like, all the, all the trappings that I've got come with working spiritually differently, do you know what I mean, at a deeper level, I think. And I can see my own defects of character visibly more and more. And, um, you know, so i just got to keep doing that. You know, I I spoke to my sponsor this week and he just said, you know, like, congratulations. And you, you just got to do it for the next 20 years. I thought, that's right, do you know what I mean? I'm like, um, that's, I just got just got to keep doing it a day in day out every day you know and I've never you know although like the first nine years I think I was doing like four or five meetings a week I'd always do loads of PI work loads of service I could do loads of it and then I got a job where I couldn't do those PI talks and then I had kids so it makes things even more difficult but I have always done basics day in day out read my big book prayers all those simple things do as service as I can and, you know, I've always just tried to just be honest with my sponsor and do all of those basic things. And, you know, I'm still here, I'm still sober, and I've got a great life, and I'm not going to make the 25. But um, just thank you all, and uh, thanks a lot. Well, my name's Chris. I'm an alcoholic. Hi. Thanks for your sponsorship, Dave. Uh, thanks for asking me to share, Gary, and thank you to the founders for starting a meeting. Um, right, my, my experience before coming to AA was uh, looking back now. Of you know, I'm well now, but looking back, um, I wasn't well. You know, even in primary school, um, even way back then, I could see that I wasn't well. A very selfish sort of person, um, self-centered, always thinking about myself, and. Uh, I got up to secondary school and a lot of fear come into my life. Uh, I mean, massive amount of fear come in. I was like, in primary school, it was all like, brilliant. When I got into the big school, oh, fear come into my life. Um, I started hanging around with boys uh, that were, 
doing wrong things and I started doing them as well and uh, started drinking at the age of about 14 and, and doing other, other stuff as well and uh, I was getting worse in myself still. You know, I was, I was always constantly worrying about what other people were thinking of me. Um, it was never, never good. I always thought you didn't like me and uh, um, that was my thinking, you know, it was in that, and I can get it now and it's just, it's an absolute nightmare and that's why I had to drink. This is why I had to get away from me and my thinking. And uh, I can see it all now. I can see it looking back. And I, I just didn't have a chance before because I, I didn't know what the hell was going on. You know, I didn't know who to speak to. I didn't know how to gauge myself. Is this how you're supposed to feel? You know, it's just I was always thinking of death and worrying about it in bed and stuff like that. And just, su- just such a negative, negative person. And I can see this clear as day today. And uh, it's, you know, it's, there's so many people in the world that is that's like that, you know, and they're going through it and kids are going through it and they don't even know what's going on and they're, they're, they're going to end up in prison and stuff like that. And uh, it's just it's just going to carry on and on and on. And um, I've just been, I've found a life, you know, I've found freedom from how I used to be. And so I just didn't think that would, you know, I didn't know what was going on. You know, drink, you know, I've been told was was that ease and comfort. You know, when I come here, I was being told all these things. All I knew is that, oh, I'll just, I'll, I've got a drink. I've got a drink. Get me cider, come back. Oh, I ended up like being on my own all the time. I just can't be around people. And uh, I'll just drink on my own. And I'll be just, that ease and comfort, that, that just happiness in my head, you know? It's just, this is the place you're always going to be, is up here, you know? So if, if you're going to, if you've got a bad, attitude, if you've got, you know, you see the world in a certain way, you're going to feel feel that and see that in the world. And I was just feeling fear, paranoia, and uh, once I had that drink, it was just, oh, amazing, absolutely amazing. I just, I felt like, I just wanted to go out and, like, be with people and just, you know, I felt connecting and just, I just loved that feeling. I just, you know, just I loved people. But that, and that just wasn't the way it's, it was for me. It was you take the drink away, and I hated people, you know, I hated people because I just couldn't get on with them, you know, and uh, at the end of my drinking, it was, uh, it, I just wanted blackout, I just wanted oblivion because my head was just torturing me, it would just torture me, it would be saying stuff, you know, the like intrusive thoughts, I just thought, this was all real, this is all real that's going in my head, and this is how it, you know, this is what the world's like, you know? And uh, I just, I wanted to die. I just, I, and I felt some ease. When I said to myself, I, just just kill yourself, just kill yourself. And I actually felt some some ease from that because I, I would, it was almost like I stopped fighting, fighting the world. <laughs> and uh, I remember I'd get down on, my, down, down on my knees crying and just, just rocking, just please, just God, just, just, let me be happy, just let me be happy and let me live a long time as well, put in all these conditions so, and get me a car no, I would, no, so I was doing that and, it's like, I was, and, and that was to a God that I didn't believe in you know, it, I was just, you know, I was caught I was trapped, I was trapped and I was just, I was just please Lord just, just get me out of this, just let me feel happy and I remember two weeks later I turned up to this meeting and uh, I found other people like me, and it's just, just amazing. Just, uh, just the gratitude that I got thinking about it. You know, every time I think about it, this joy, you know, the first time I come here and I find more people, like it just, oh, it's just amazing. And uh, but I thought that, oh, I haven't done what they've done. Some of these lot have like, you know, killed people and stuff, and uh, they've gone prison and stuff. And like, I, thought, I haven't done that, and, and that's what. My, find, my mind would always, you know, go put me in a corner, as usual. It put me in a corner and make me think that, you know, you can't have this. You can't have anything good. And uh, But the thing is, is that they just said, keep on coming back. Just keep on coming back. They told me about alcoholism, what that was about. And uh, for years, day in, day out, I was just picking up the drink, getting hammered, didn't have no control over it. So I wake up in whenever I woke up feeling like crap, 
and say, I'm never, ever going to do that again. And we all say it. And we all know what that's like, the fact that we, we say it. We say it when we really mean it. And I'm never going to... I've not done that every freaking day. And I only found that out when I come into the meeting that I was doing that, remembering back that I was doing that. And I would always forget every time. And I would always pick it up again. And uh, I said, yeah, I'm like that. I'm like that. And it was just saying other stuff like... Uh, feeling of bad, you know, something bad's going to happen. He goes, yeah, yeah, I always get that. And uh, just all these things people were saying, I was never able to articulate it, ne- never able to get it out of my head because it was just always going around and around. And just, and I'll be just, my mum is saying, go, we'll take you to doctors. And I just don't know what to say to them. What do you say to these people? And uh, when I come here and I sat down and listen, that's what all we ask for anybody that's new, just come, come here and just sit down and just listen. And listen to the similarities, the things that, you know, you've done. And, and uh, that's what I did. And I was, I was just a, a wreck. I was just wrecked, shaking, sweating. Um, just started getting into that act that I always did. Like, the people pleaser going, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, just uh, don't even know what the hell you're telling me. Like that. And I go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Like that. And just, just straight slipped straight back into it. Um, you know, that's what just I'll, that's what I'm dealing with. I'll just I'll just be an actor. I'll be an actor, and I won't listen. I won't listen to to the information that's being told to me. And I'll just like um, when Gavin was saying about you know taking directions off people. Oh yeah, and he's just saying oh yeah, look at it. They drive off and go what the hell? I don't even know where I'm going. Like sort of thing. So it's like I had to learn to do a a lot of different things in my life. Like when I got myself a sponsor, I. I felt that, you know, nobody cares about me, and I felt like, oh, he, he, won't, he don't care about me, and just self-pity and all that, and just, and I, I, I remember Dave caught me hands, and he shook me hands, and I said, and we just got a conversation going up, and said, oh, I said, I love, like what you got, and stuff like that, and he said, I'll, I'll sponsor you, like that, and said, as long as you're willing to take, you know, certain steps that I've done. I'm like, yeah, 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 like that. Like, people please here again. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, said, I don't know, even know what you're talking about. And, uh, and I started coming to the meetings on time. I started doing the suggested things that he was telling me to do and on a daily basis. And, I, and it, it, this took quite a while, like a couple of weeks, to really get into doing my suggestions properly. I was like, still just sitting there in my uh, mum's house. I was in the box room, just sitting there, stewing over stuff like that, and I'm thinking about doing these actions, and uh, I was going, I was just losing my mind, I was really losing, it was almost like I was going to just lose my mind, and I was going to say, mum, mum, I'm losing, I'm losing my mind, yeah, I'm just, and I just got down on my knees, I just said a simple prayer, got up, started reading the big book, and I think it was almost like I broke, I just broke then, and started doing it someone else's way. And uh, I started doing these actions, the, the suggested things, on a daily basis. And uh, I started getting that ease and comfort. And uh, you won't get it. You won't get that if you're not doing these actions, you know? It's, if you go on your own ideas, you're going to be the person who drinks, who wants to get off her eggs, you know? So my experience and our experience is you start doing these, these actions, they'll start pushing you in a direction that allows you not to want to get off your head, not get drunk and, and fight against the world. It's my experience. It's just, it really has. It has stopped me from some swimming up stream. It's, it's allowed me to walk with, you know, the world and feel connected. And that's by doing these simple actions. And that was just doing that and uh, it's, it's praying to God. Um, it was just, I didn't have, I've got no religious feelings toward God and stuff like that. It's all it's ever been is just just putting the actions in. Um, and a lot of people start by um, the the group is the, the higher power. Look at look it's amazing the amount of people here with good quality sobriety and uh, that's that's a good place to start if if you find it difficult. So that's what um, I just started to just believe in, in, in anything, that sort of thing. I started going through those 12 steps, and it's, and it's unblocked me from all, all that crap. I'm not allowed to be happy. And that's what I thought. I've done so many horrible stuff to people. All I think about is resentment all the time towards people and what I want to do to them. Um, and that was just blocking me off 
from any happiness, from any higher power coming into my life, any change. And once I started going through those 12 steps and getting a higher power in my life, I was starting to, like it says, live in the sunlight sun of the spirit. You know, and I know that sounds a bit airy fairy, and uh, but I'll tell you, when you start feeling it, you'll be loving it. You'll be loving it from from where you've come from, from the darkness, from depression, from being on your own. When you start getting that feeling, it's it's second to none. You know, and and it it shows you that there's something here. There's something so special here. But if you don't do those actions, you never even come close to it. You know, so it's it's just having to surrender, completely surrender, and that's what I've done. And uh, start going through those twelve steps. Went through step four, and that straight away I thought, I'm not doing that. I'm not telling my sponsor the the horrible stuff that I've done in my life. You know, I was just, I'm I'm never going to be a free man. You know, because they will always keep me sick. These secrets will always keep me down, and you won't be able to look the world in the eyes. But I've done, I've done. Started going through the steps, and they're done in a certain way that once you get the step four, you feel like, oh, I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to you know, disclose all these things. And uh, I did. You know, I told my sponsor. He, he didn't talk to, me for, <laughs> talk to me for a few weeks, but no, I'm only joking. Uh, and he'd never shake me out. <laughs> we washing his hands and stuff. But, uh, uh, but um, no, he didn't. He didn't at all. He didn't. And uh, it's just, but you feel like that. That it's like, oh, I can't tell anybody this stuff, that sort of thing. But you're with people that are just as sick as you. You know, they're just we're in a place where we can. It's a spiritual kindergarten. You know, where you can, you can grow. This is a place to start life again. You know, and it's not going to get took the piss out of or um, ridiculed or anything. This is such a, a, a safe place. To restart your life again, so it's it's just thinks it's just a day at a time. That's all it is. So anybody's new or just starting on this, it's a day at a time, and you're going to be fighting against. If you're anything like me, fighting against your thinking, you know. But you, you're going to have these thinkings coming in and out, saying you, oh, I don't have to do this, or um, just whatever. But the the main thing is that you do the actions. That's what's going to turn it, turn your life. It's not the thinking. So. It's these thoughts are going to come in, and a good one to do is this. What's it called? The Serenity Prayer. That one's so simple. You can just walk around and just say it in your head, like no one's even knowing that you're doing it, like sort of thing. And it's like you know you're getting uncomfortable, and you'd feel you know we are people who are anxious. You know, myself, I'll get anxious. I'll have panic attacks. I used to come to the meetings and I'm like, oh, get that out. And they put me up the front, so I have to die in the front there. So, so it's just that, that is the person who I'm, I'm going towards. I'm just, I'm just going to be that person for the rest of my days. You know, that just that, just pathetic. I'm just, I'm not a, of any use to anybody. But because of, I've given and I've done these actions and, and walked with you lot in the right direction. I'm not that person anymore. I'm not a loser. You know, I'm, I've, my life is taking on new meaning. You know, it, it's it's just widened up so much where my thinking would always lead me to a corner. To, I'm trapped. I can't think myself out of this. But when I'm when I'm doing this stuff, when I'm doing you know higher power, step three, when I'm just hand it over, it's just bang. It's like that. My life is just. Opportunities, you just see it, and it's 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 so kind and baffling. This fucking our thinking, it's just. I wish I could just just you know just give in for the rest of my days, but my ego resur- resurges all the time. I'm, I'm always you always got to watch yourself, you know. You, that's why it's a day at a time. It's a day at a time because if you just done it for one day, you know you will start to turn and turn. After a while, you start turning. And you just, you'll drink again. You'll go mental. And the thing is, by doing it a day at a time, it's, it's you're managing, you know? Higher power is managing your life. And you're able just to enjoy the next day. Instead of taking that over, the crap that you've accumulated from that day onto that one, fighting against the world. My, my, miss, my poor missus, my kids, they just had the worst of me. You know, I'd just be I'd violent to them. 
violent because I was just, you know, when you're just so frustrated that you just, I just don't know what to do. I'm just, I can't get out of this thinking. You want me to show you love? I've got nothing in there. I've got nothing to show you. I'm, I'm bankrupt of it. And the, the, the amazing thing is, is that this, the 12 steps, I've had glimpses of being a person who could be loving. You know, in the early days, you just, it, and it's just, I remember I goes into my buddy's room, and then, and I'm yapping to him after I meet him, yapping like hell, like that. And it's just, I'm just, I feel connected to him. You know, and it's like, I would have never had that. You know, I've never, ever had that. If I didn't, if it weren't for AA, and putting in the actions. And the thing is, you forget that. You forget how good it is. And you, you take the foot off your pedal, off the pedal. You, you just, you start looking at, oh, I'll put more into my job. I start earning more money, trying to look, look for that. And, uh, or looking good and stuff like that. And the more I can put into my recovery, uh, the, that, that ease and comfort, that's all I've wanted, is that ease and comfort. But I always get diverted. I always get diverted. And that's why it's fantastic. This group, such a special place to come that people show you what you can have. You can have, you can have this freedom, this just live your dreams. And by the way I do things sometimes is that I'll go down and trap myself again. And it's like, oh, freaking hell, it's just, I feel this, this tightness. I'll come to a meeting and I'll, I'll just hear it. I'll just hear the, the solution again. And I'll just let go again, let go Stop, stop doing it my way, because my way is always give me shit. You know, it's give, it's give me nothing. And that's why I would always go for that drink, because I'll be just getting tighter and tighter in myself. I need to, I need to get have a release, or, or top myself. And uh, I don't need to do that today. I don't need to do that, because I've got a sponsor. I've got, I've got tools. I've got, I can pray. Step 11, I've got, you know, all these things which I didn't have before. All it was, it was me against you, and I'll be just going round and round, reliving all the stuff that people have done to me. I should have said this. Why didn't you say this? Oh, that was a good one. Why didn't you say that one, though? Like that, and it's like, and like um, Sheridan was saying, driving into bus, like that. It's like, that is what we're dealing with. That is our solution, you know? That is how distorted we are, we think that the only way to get freedom is to, you know, kill ourselves. You know, and it's like, remember that, that boy, a uh, bloke who killed people with a shotgun? Um, that is just mental thinking, you know, resentment toward people. And if I had, if I had a gun, you know, it's, it's disgusting as it sounds, but that is how selfish I am. That is how self-centered I am. All I think is about me. And I'll come to this group, and they've told me, you've got to look outwards. You've got to start thinking of others. And by thinking of others, that's, you know, that self-centeredness, it disappears. And you feel that ease and comfort. You feel that bloody, the, the gratitude in life. I was just missing it all. I'm absolutely missing it all because I was doing it my way. And that's, it's not any fault of anybody's, you know, it's just how naturally you, you, you go towards. But now I've been shown a different way and it's, I've had to work, you know, I've had to work service, um, being honest to my sponsor. I had to, I've had to change everything around. I, when I came into Alcoholics Anonymous, um, I had the opportunity of getting into a job, and, and, and it was at night, on nights, and I would have missed my meetings, and my sponsor said, it's not a good idea to do it. And I said, yeah, okay, I won't do it. Although I thought, you know, this is the be all and end all, that like, sort of thing. Um, I'll just, right, I'll go on your thinking. And like relationships and, and jobs, and when I first come on, I've got nothing that makes me happy. I've, nothing makes me happy at all. And by doing this, I've got, I, usually I don't get bored at all. There's always something to do, always something to do. I've, I've, I feel like I've found my potential. I was always thinking that I'm just, 
I'm just crap at everything. You know, just crap at everything. I can't look people in the eyes at work, in the workplace. I'm just a gibbering idiot. I'm like, so like into myself that I can't be a part of. But by going through these 12 steps, I remember like taking interviews for jobs. I'm just on fire. Just speaking to these people, not on fire, but just really just it's so enthusiastic. I've, I've found something, you know, you could, you know, they're sitting there like that, looking at me. Like, oh yeah, like that. And I'm just, I'm just like so enthusiastic. And because I've changed, I've had to change in thought and attitude by going through these 12 steps and keeping up with the suggestions on a daily basis. And that's kept the spiritual awakening. So if you're new, you, you've got to work for this. You've got to work for it a day at a time. You've got to forget about everything else and just put this first. Put this first and you will get everything you've been looking for. And, it's, and it's, you might feel, oh, I feel uncomfortable here. I feel, um, I can't get on with people and I can't, you know, have fun and show you who I really am. It's, don't worry about all that. It's all about putting in actions. That's all it is. And so if a sponsor says to you, go up and speak to others, Go up to speak to others. You've got to break that person who just sits on ass on their own. You're not, you're not going to go anywhere. That's my experience. And it's, it's such a dangerous, you might think it's nothing, but it's such a dangerous thing to do because you're putting these habits early on. You, you need to be getting into good habits and they're hard to, hard to break. And this has all been taught to me by people who've gone before me, a sponsor. And it all might feel like it's, yeah, but that's crap. That's all, that's nothing. That's, it's, it, how does it work, that sort of thing? And we've all said that to ourselves, probably. But the main thing is, if you do it, you will see that it works. But if you don't do it, you'll never, you'll never get a glimpse of what we're talking about. And, uh, oh, I do. And, uh, so, um, is that, just two minutes left, yeah? Brilliant. So, this is my uh, birthday share. And uh, I can look back with a lot of, honestly, a lot of good memories. And uh, like Dave says, so I, I can't remember it. when we're out there doing whatever we're doing. You can you look back, and there's nothing there. There's nothing there at all to look back at and think, oh, that was good to, for myself. But coming into Alcoholics Anonymous, getting into service, really trying to think of others, the newcomer of of change, and I can look back and think, it's such good good times. Such good times. And I, I always wanted to get up here and say, I don't know why, but um, it's like, remember Pam? that used to come to a group, and uh, she used to start off her thing, and she used to say, I was born in the days of the Raj. Like that, I just, I just, I just remembered it. I was just thinking back of like all the different characters, like Biscuit Mark, and you know all the people going to Copenhagen with um, Mike and all the other boys and Wayne, and just... It's good stuff. It really is good stuff. But you've got to go, go against that self-centeredness, which will always creep in. That's what we've got for the rest of our lives. As long as we look forward outwards, work with the newcomers, and keep on top of your step tens, unblock yourself from all that crap, you know, we're, f- we're loving it. We're loving it. And so uh, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.